Unconditional love can't be attained by a spiritual perfectionist. Let's talk about that. Now when I say attained, I don't really mean it, because we're already that unconditional love in our base consciousness. But we have this thing in the spiritual community called an ego, right? And of course before we have some sort of awakening experience, our ego is a very normal ego. It's looking at how I can uh, cheat my way through life perhaps, or how I can um, gain the most for myself and it's understandable why, why that we have that mechanism inside of ourselves because we need it to survive right but as we begin our spiritual journey we require a bit of discretion we don't have to act on the voice in the mind that thought or that ego that we call I in the head because quite frankly yes it's a part of us but it's not the complete entirety of us it's just mental and of course in this spiritual journey, anything that's, the reason we call it a spiritual journey is because we're talking about things that, that deepen our experience of life, that go beyond potentially the physical body. Unconditional love, or our base consciousness that we want to talk about, is potentially physical, it's, at least it's held in this physical vessel, right? Well, maybe we could call it semi-physical, but the mind is definitely very physical, isn't it? It's very tangible, it's observable. And so, in this sense, it's of this world. And therefore, uh, we're wanting to, perhaps in this spiritual journey, begin creating a bit of distance between the physical elements of ourself and the existential elements of ourselves. Now, of course, I'm just talking about concepts. And of course, concepts can never really fully describe exactly what I'm talking about. You just have to experience it, and that's why we do the yoga. And so, if you want to sign up for the free yoga down below, you're more than welcome to. There's also a free breathing practice, if that's more of your, um, what's the word, proclivity? I don't know. <laughs> if that's the thing you, you want to try out more, then you're more than welcome to. It's certain to stoke up uh, a good feeling state of being in you pretty instantly. There's a free community down below on Facebook um, that you can sign up for and share with people that are going through uh, similar experiences with you, like-minded individuals. And as well, there's the one-to-one -one coaching, which I'm about to take a new intake for the new year shortly. So if you want to apply for that, you're more than welcome to down below. The application form is free. The coaching, of course, in itself isn't free. Back to the video. The spiritual perfectionist. This thing in the mind, this ego that we're talking about here. So let's look at it from a normal perspective. So normally, in our normal life, before the awakening, our awakening, we may well have had um, expectations of ourself or expectations of life to be a certain way. Like, I expected myself to be famous, or I expected myself to earn X amount of money by year 2020, or something like this, isn't it? And we know, quite frankly, that this ego, in a sense, is flawed. There's a good joke about it, and it says, uh, if you want to make uh, if you want to make God laugh, uh, tell him your plans for your life. And of course we recognise perhaps we're not in control of this existence. It's all at the behest of divine will. And we're a part of that and that's exciting. And we can co-create with that magical energy, that unconditionally loving energy. The thing is though, first of all we have to get rid of this. Not first of all, because we, we can still manifest things with a spiritual ego, you know, God knows I've done it. Uh, but what, what, when we want clean, pure manifestations, clean um, things inside of ourself, you know, a, a pure center, a pure heart, then we need to address this spiritual perfectionist. Now we, most of us on this journey, are perfectionists. I think most humans are, um, but then we end up being quite lazy in actuality because perfection doesn't exist and also we set really high bound uh, boundaries, not boundaries, like uh, what's the word I'm looking for, really high goals for ourselves that we just cannot fulfill. Now by all means I'm not saying lower your expectations, I'm saying have none. What's there when we drop all of our expectations inside of ourselves? So the spiritual perfectionist 
has listened to lots of YouTube videos perhaps and listened to some wonderful teachers out there speaking from truth. And the spiritual ego has taken in that information and is then using it as a barometer or a standard for itself. It must act in this way, ultra spiritual way, otherwise I'm going to berate myself and cause untold damage to themselves and other people because they couldn't live up to our expectations. Sorry, there'll be a jump cut in there because my battery just died. Actually, it wasn't the battery, it's the memory card screwing up, but we're back. So, our expectations spiritually are hurting ourselves because we think we have to live up to the highest ideal. Some of us have really enlightened teachers, like myself, really, really in this life, you know, uh, living it truly. And I said to a client one day, um, would you expect an apprentice at a body workshop for cars to be able to build the full car at the end of day one? In fact, if that apprentice came into the body car shop and said to the bosses, I'm going to build that car fully by the end of the day, they would have said, you're mad, right? Well, this is all we're doing. We're holding ourselves to the ideals of those really enlightened teachers that are teaching truth, because it is truth, at least it's coming from truth. But teachings, words, can't reveal truth inside of ourselves. We can recognise that truth in the words, but the truth, uh, the final truth, uh, the true truth inside of ourselves must be realised experientially, isn't it? My words here may be helpful, they may not be, but even with my words I can't force you to see truth, isn't it? Because my words come out and then they filter through you and your belief systems. And who knows, I may not even be speaking from truth because I'm still on my journey, but there's less of me in me now, so I feel reasonably confident to, to speak, if this makes sense. Remember, this spiritual perfectionist is another identity, isn't it? I'm this pure spiritual being, but we cause damage to ourselves when we're not, and we don't act in accordance with that pure spiritual being ideal or ideology. And then we cause untold damage to other people by judging them. And we shouldn't judge, isn't it? Judging is really cruel. I know it myself because I've judged, thinking, oh, no worry, you know, because it doesn't hurt me. And then my karma was creating YouTube videos where people do write very mean things. And regardless of how deep you go on this journey, they still hurt. So we shouldn't judge it. It's really cruel, uh, especially if, uh, you know, there's lots of body shaming out there. That seems to be coming out to light in society at the moment. It's I've started watching the news again. Dangerous, I know. But I feel confident in myself enough now to be able to watch that without wobbling. Anyway, we'll move on. No need to be a good person. You know, we have this idea that we're going to be this ultra-spiritual perfectionist person who is completely vegetarian or vegan or whatever the, the thing of the day is. And that's completely pure. No caffeine, no alcohol, no nothing, no cigarettes. And of course, this isn't, this are all separate from the spiritual journey. We can be spiritual and have a drink of alcohol. We can be spiritual and have a cigarette or something. We know great sages of the past have done it, but we hold ourselves to this expectation that we can't do any of these things whilst we're doing all of these things. And then we hurt ourselves, and it's this vicious cycle of, let me expect the best of myself, fine to do that. You know, but don't let me hold myself to that expectation and then berate myself and use it as another excuse to self-blame or self-judge when I don't live up to that expectation. We're just apprentices on this journey. Everything happens in divine timing. Relax up on yourself. Don't take it so seriously. These are words for myself, <laughs> really, but I'm sure they're helpful for other people too. Sometimes we can be dicks. Sometimes we can get angry. And then we get angry at ourselves for getting angry because we think we're better than that now because we're part of the spiritual journey and it, it's just inauthentic, isn't it? No need to be a spiritual perfectionist. But if it's there in the ego, then, you know, this one is something to be looked out for because it will be calming harm, harm to ourselves and many other people around us. Remember, I'll leave it on a 
positive note. It's good to acknowledge on this journey your growth. It's good to acknowledge where you are currently rather than where you're not. I've spent a long time acknowledging that I'm not super enlightened. This wonderful, glorious, ultra enlightened spiritual being of love, joy, bliss and ecstasy. Because this is this takes hard work, years of heartbreaking sadhana to become that. And I'm midway through my process, perhaps. And so perhaps we, we should acknowledge the positive of where we are, of how far we've come, of what we're doing right. Pat ourselves on the back. I hate editing. I'm sorry, it's bad for a YouTuber, right? But I hate editing the videos. And therefore sometimes I get a little bit lazy and I don't make videos. And you've seen this, and my apologies. Uh, and then I berate myself for not doing it. But then this holds you in this vicious cycle doesn't it? Where you don't do it and you don't feel like you want to do it and your energy's low because you're hurting yourself on the inside and you're saying, you're an idiot. How can you call yourself a YouTuber when you don't like editing or whatever we do? And this is completely the negative switch of it, isn't it? Can we appreciate and acknowledge how far we've come? Can, can we pat ourselves on the back when we do do the editing? I've been doing that. I've been speaking in a really kind way to myself. And actually, I've now done loads of editing for stuff on the back end, which of course you can sign up for all of the stuff down below or find it on my website, as should you wish. I hope this helps. Watch out for that spiritual perfectionist, because he or she, ego, is those thought patterns, patternings are holding us further away from the truth that we already are if we just let go of those patternings. And when we let go of those expectations, spiritual ideologies, blah, 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 of ourselves, what's left? Well, it's the truth of who we are. Remember, you're spiritual because of what you are and who you are, not because of your behaviours. I wish you a really happy new year. Namaste.